Very good. Good evening. I'd like to call to order the uh, Finance Committee of uh, Tuesday, March 14th, 2023 at 6 p.m. The uh, first order of business is the approval of minutes, draft minutes of the February 28th, 2023 finance meeting, committee meeting. I move approval. We have a um, motion for approval by Alder Gerhardt. Uh, is there any discussion? All right, hearing none, we'll place the motion before us to a vote. Those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Ayes have it. Motion carries. Item three, public appearances, non-agenda items. I don't believe we have anybody registered at all. Okay. Very good. We'll move on to item four. Uh, finance director report, treasurer's report as of December 31st, 2022, preliminary and pre-close. I'll turn the floor over to our finance director, Misty Dodge. Thank you. Uh, so included in the packet is the December Treasurer's Report. Uh, you'll notice it's only kind of the first half of the report that you usually see. Uh, that's because we're still going through the end of year audit preparation, end of year closing preparation. So for the bulk of this report that's there, it is all constant because it's you know where our investments are. That won't change through audit. But the one page that's in there that lists it by fund, that does change as we continue our closing process. So that's why I made sure to note that it was preliminary and pre-close um, just so everybody was on the same page. Once we get through the audit and we know that our numbers are solid, I'll do the more traditional report. So you have those full balances available for your review, which will still be somewhat tentative until we get through the actual audit report, um, but we'll be pretty close to being final at that point. So you should see that in the next, probably not next meeting because I have spring break next week, but the meeting after that. So I guess I'll pause here in case there's questions and then I do have more to report on. No questions. Excellent. Uh, other things to talk about. So uh, in the news, a lot of people have been talking about the collapse of the SVB bank. Um, I did share some information with the finance committee and then that got shared with the council as well um, that the city does not expect to be impacted by that. Um, so our WISC account, which has quite a few CDs, doesn't have any direct placements with that particular bank or the other one that's having troubles. Um, our Park Bank, which is where we have a lot of our money, um, all of that through the ICS account that we have does not have any investments directly in either of those banks. And then besides that, the city has an investment policy that really focuses on having FDIC coverage. And for the most part, we are covered under that. There's sometimes where we violate it due to timing issues. Uh, like when we collect a bunch of money all on the de December 31st, um, that has some problems. But for the most part, we are all FDIC covered for our CD investments. So it is big news, um, but it's not expected to have any impact here at the city. Other news, uh, so Robert Cornelius, if you've met him before, he's the current uh, account clerk too. He does uh, utility billing and accounts payable. He has actually been promoted, so he's taking that accountant position that you guys approved. Uh, so we are going to backfill his old position now that's posted. Um, hope to have a hiring decision in the next couple of months, um, but congratulations to him on his promotion. What that does mean, though, is we'll have some more transition time because I don't expect him to do two full-time jobs in that interim piece. Uh, so we'll kind of slowly phase him into the accountant duties. But congratulations to him. Audit is happening as we speak. Uh, so we spent a lot of time the last few weeks getting things all cleaned up and organized and ready to go. The auditors are on site all this week, um, which just means that there's a lot of answering questions and pulling documentation and things like that. Uh, so it's going well overall, uh, but it is a busy time. And then the ARPA TID closure investment plan is approved tonight at council. So I'm sure you have looked at the amendments that were posted after tonight. That investment plan will be adopted and get posted onto the website and then continue through the CIP and budget process. So lots of stuff happening. Very good. Anything further? All right. So Questions, yes, Alder Gerhardt. The, with the ARPA to investment plan, is that something that we're planning to do annually f going forward until we utilize all the funds? Until we utilize all the funds, okay. yes. Yep. Good. And about the same time is kind of what I was thinking. Great. Yeah, because it's kind of separate from the other two major <laughs> processes that involve money. Okay, good. That's, and it that's feeds good. into it, right? It's like this is kind of that first step and the rest of them. Perfect. Thanks. Very good. I'll move on to the next item on the agenda. Item five, <clears throat> review of bills. First, uh, first item is 5A, detailed review of checks for $10,000 and above for the period of February 16th through the 28th, 2023, totaling $151,007.46. Discussion? Yes, Alder Gerard, go ahead. 
Uh, one question, I'm, I'm looking at uh, page 14 of the packet, page one of the report. I guess there's only one more page. Right at the top um, for the general communications, the last two under the description say Verona, ro Verona radio maintenance and EPIC radio maintenance. Can you, I'm just curious about the how that's phrased. Yep, so all of those costs is for our annual maintenance costs of the DaneCom system. Uh, the two ones that you referenced, that's the piece that we actually bill back. So we send a bill to Verona for that $480, and we'll send a bill to Epic for the $1,200. So it's their portion of the cost for the extra something that we have down in that area that they agreed to cost share with us. Great, good to know, thanks. Mm -hmm. Very good, moving on to 5B, detail review of all checks issued checks 124847 through 124891 for the period of February 16th through the 28th, 2023, uh, totaling $246,496.51. Discussion? Yes, Alder Garrett, go ahead. A uh, couple, um, sorry, let me just, uh, page 18 of the packet, I'm looking at, I'm sorry. Oh, there's a Railworks insurance claim. I'm curious about that, because I, I, I don't recall anything like that coming through council. So if I remember correctly, Chad, I might need your help on this one. The Railworks insurance claim, was that the officer that damaged the railroad crossing? I think that went through council, didn't it? It did. Okay, yeah. I just don't recall. Somewhere, sure. It's been a while. Yeah. It, okay. it took a while for the whole thing to work itself out. Mm. Yeah, I guess there was some discussion on it somewhere in there. Okay. Okay. All right. Just wanted to double check on that. Thank you. All right. Moving on to five C. Detail review of ACH payments for $10,000 and above for the period of February 1st through the 28th, 2023. Uh, total dollars, $973,620.33. Uh, discussion? Okay, hearing none, I'll move on to 5D. Detail review of all ACH payments for the period of February 1st through the 28th, 2023. Total dollars, $985,054.59. Discussion. N hearing none, we'll move on to action items. First action item is uh, 6A. Um, before us is resolution R-14-23 authorizing increase in compensation for the city of Fitchburg elected officials effective May 1st, 2024. And I would like to motion to uh, send to council without consideration. I'll second that if I, if I need to. <laughs> you know, very good. We have a, uh, uh, a second, even though we don't need to. <laughs> so nothing further on that. It's from a par uh, procedural. Just, just to clarify, I assume you mean uh, without a recommendation from Finance Committee. That's correct. Yep. Without a recommendation from Finance Committee. Yep. Okay, very good. Uh, moving on to action item. Oh, we do still need to vote on that, though. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> with, the, with the motion before us, uh, those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 The ayes have it. Motion carries. All right. Moving on to action item 6B. Uh, we, before us, we have a resolution of R-43-23, terminating tax incremental district number four. Do I have a motion? I'll move approval. All right. Alder Gerhardt moves for approval. And um, you'll be speaking to this, Misty? I will. All so right. this is one of the last steps in this lengthy process now. We've adopted a few different resolutions to close TID for. This resolution will be the official closure of the district. We want it to be done by April 15th, which is the magic date for TID purposes. Um, the TID has been very successful, so there's going to be a fair amount of excess increment accumulated with the TID. Once we go through the final audit, whatever balance is still there ends up getting shared amongst all of the overlying jurisdictions of which Fitchburg gets about a third. Very good discussion. 
Hearing none, we'll place the motion before us to a vote. Those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 The ayes have it. Motion carries. Uh, moving on to next, the next action item, which is 6C, Resolution R-45-23, Approving Agreement with Aqua Backflow for Cross-Connection Control and Grease Trap Services. Do I have a motion? I move approval. Uh, Alder Gerhardt, motion for approval. And is this back to you then, Misty? Thank you. Okay. You want it? No, you're good. <laughs> so, uh, unfortunately, Public Works was not able to be with us this evening, uh, at least for finance. But what I'm aware of with this is uh, the city is entering into agreement with a vendor to inspect all of the cross connections in our water utility system. Uh, this is, will require visits to approximately 900 uh, separate uh, addresses in order to accomplish this. Uh, mo the vast majority of those are going to be business or commercial uh, related uh, visits. And as part of this uh, process, uh, we have not done any sort of uh, inspection or evaluation of grease traps that also may be required with some of these particular uh, businesses or locations. So this contract will also begin uh, the process of uh, establishing some grease trap uh, services for the city. We have been informed that we do have uh, grease in city owned uh, sanitary lines. So this is one method that we can uh, employ in order to help reduce or mitigate the amount of grease that is entering and collecting into our, our sewer lines, city owned sewer lines. I'll open it up for a discussion. Alder Gerhardt. My one main question is, so was this included in the most recent CIP as part of the water utility? Or is this sort of something new that has come up in since? So this is part of the operating budget, not a CIP project. I do believe it was included in the budget, though. Okay. Uh, and then the other thing was, since we know we have grease in the in the water mains, do we expect that there is a possibility we might need to remediate that? Because we're obviously only adding traps at this point. And I, we can certainly ask this at council too if, um, but. So the, any grease uh, would be in the sewer lines, not our water lines. Okay. So there's obviously a, an important distinction there. And uh, these grease traps are likely already present in a number of these uh, commercial buildings anyway. Uh, we just don't have an inventory of them and whether or not uh, they've been serviced and or inspected uh, recently. Uh, there is a, a nice uh, staff memo as a supporting document that summarizes both the cross-connection control services that will be performed as well as the grease trap services as well. Thanks. Yep. Yeah, I, just for clarification purposes, the, the, the grease that, let's, let's just say, comes from a restaurant, it, it, is, it is collected... There is a policy to collect it and not send it into the sewer, correct? For So the grease trap services from the staff memo indicates uh, this creates a grease trap program for the city, provide recommended updates to the city's ordinance to enforce the grease trap program, identify facilities that are required to have grease traps per DSPS requirements, which is uh, Division of Safety, it's the Public state. Public Service? Yeah, it's a state organization that does a lot with uh, commercial building uh, code. Inspect existing grease traps within the city for conformance with DSPS regulations, manage the grease trap program within their database, and work with the utility to bring all facilities in violation of any DSPS regulations and the city's ordinances into compliance. So from the grease trap perspective, it's again, uh, we know that there are plenty of businesses that have, have grease traps in play already. Mm -hmm. It's a matter of conducting those inspections, getting an inventory, and ensuring that everyone is in compliance. Okay, very good. Further discussion? Hearing none, I'll place the motion before us to a vote. Those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Ayes have it. Motion carries. Uh, moving on to the next uh, action item, which is 6D. Randy, may I interrupt on this one? Yes, you may. Uh, so because there is a closed session at the council meeting tonight on this item, staff would recommend that we also send this one to council without a recommendation from finance committee. Okay, very good. So I will proceed with at least reading the resolution and present it similar to the last. Yep. Okay. 
So then before us is the resolution R-46-23, approving a TIF development agreement between Arlo Apartments LLC and the city of Fitchburg. I motion to, uh, I got the correct wording here, send, send, to, uh, send, back, send to council without a recommendation. Yep, exactly. Okay. We need an approval for that. So we don't need a second, but we do need a vote on that. Okay. Those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 The ayes have it. Motion carries. Thank you. Moving on to item 6E. Uh, before us is resolution R-47-23, approving change order number two for maintenance services at well five. This is a direct referral. Do I have a motion? I'll move approval. Uh, motion for approval made by Alder Gerhardt. So well number five is currently undergoing maintenance and I believe it is currently offline as a result of the maintenance that's taking place. Uh, one of the initial assessments during the, this maintenance uh, process has identified uh, some additional components uh, including some uh, column pipe that are going to need to be replaced uh, that were more that was more than uh, originally anticipated. And there is also approximately 84 feet of sand uh, within that well column that is going to need to be removed as well in order to help uh, improve uh, the longevity and long-term health and performance of this well. So this is a change order to address both of those items that have been found during the, the ma maintenance inspection. Okay, very good uh, discussion. Alder Gerhardt. I just, do we have any idea what they do with all of that sand? Because that's an, it sounds like an incredible amount. I, I don't know. I mean, we can certainly ask if you'd like. And yeah, maybe see we should if ask then, Tracy. You know, I'd be curious. Yeah. What, what? I can see if we can get a response to that. Sure. Yeah, thanks. Inquiring minds want to know. <laughs> <laughs> Further discussion, questions? Hearing none, I'll place the motion before us to a vote. Those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 The ayes have it. Motion carries. Uh, moving on to item 6E. Uh, re before us is a resolution R-47-23 approving change order number two for maintenance service. I'm sorry, we just went through that one. Mm -hmm. All right. Do I need to do anything procedurally to... Okay. Nope. All right. I see the shake of the head. No. Uh, moving on to action item 6F. Motion bef before us is motion uh, resolution R-51-23 amending the 2023 budget for various funds 2022 carryovers. Do I have a motion? I move approval. Uh, approval made by Alder Gerhardt. Discussion? Nope, I'm sorry. Moving on to Misty. Yeah, so this is a process we go through around this time every year. Uh, so there are guidelines in place that were originally adopted by council that have been tweaked a little bit administratively since then, but those guidelines are included in the packet. Uh, what this is is a listing of all of the projects that were supposed to have gotten done in 2022 or were budgeted to be at least started in 2022, but for unique circumstances were not able to be completed. And staff is requesting a carryover of that budget authority into 2023 so that the projects can continue. The bulk of the carryovers that are requested are all capital projects. This makes sense because a lot of our capital projects are multi-year projects. We don't really expect to get them all done in one year. And then there's also been a lot of delays, as you've seen through different things that you've been approving purchase-wise, that there's been a lot of supply chain and staff vacancies and things that have delayed a lot of our projects. So in total, it's about $40.5 million of carryovers requested. Uh, 39 million of that is capital projects. And then about 1.4 million of that is for operating costs. Um, so the full list is included in there. Uh, if you're curious about any in particular, I'd be happy to answer questions. All right. Are there questions? Discussion? Yes. Alder Gerhardt. I have a couple of specific questions. Um, I'm looking at page 164 of the packet, one, four of the of the section, um, right at the top. I'm just curious. It seems like there's some where the carryover was requested, but it was not recommended. I'm just curious what, what happened and why were certain ones excluded? So there are uh, criteria included in those guidelines. Some of the big ones are it has to have been specifically budgeted in the year and not carried over, or I'm sorry, requested to be carried over. It had to have unique circumstances for it to not be done during the year. Uh, it would need to be project specific stuff. The bigger reason why you're seeing some of those not approved would be we won't, or we don't authorize carryover of money that's not available. So if they overspent either in that line or in total for the department, uh, we don't allow that carryover for those things either. 
Okay. And then um, there w were a couple lines where there was none requested and none recommended. Is that just, so uh, for example, down in the TID closure excess, there's the grant writing assistance. Is that just we keep that in there because some years we have it and some years we don't? No, so that one was unique because it was approved in the 2022 budget, but when we were going through the 2023 budget, it was informally unapproved. And so we said we would clean that up through this carryover process. So that was more me being transparent that we intentionally are not carrying over that amount, even though it was approved in 2022, because that money was redirected to other projects within the investment fund. Got it. Investment plan, sorry. And I have a couple more if that's Sure, okay. go ahead. Um, the, I'm sorry, which I think on page five of the, page 165 of the packet, page five of the thing, there had some fish hatchery road reconstruction carryover of 2.2 million. I was just surprised that we're still paying for, for that. I'm just, I'm just curious about that. Yeah, so we do, I talked to the auditors about this today, in fact. Uh, so there, there is some things that are still happening, some punch list items. We had a few hundred thousand dollars worth of costs still in 2022, and I just paid another bill last week for some costs for 2023. So things are kind of continuing. That full 2.2 million I don't think will actually be needed, um, but I'd rather carry over the whole thing rather than making an estimate based on unknowns whatever ends up being unspent, we would address when the project is closed. Do you anticipate that we'll probably be close that Under. out by the end of this, this calendar year? We that I couldn't answer for sure, because I don't know how long the punch list items things take. Yeah, so it's not sure. amazing how long it takes. Uh, and then my last one would be on page seven, um, they're under the sewer fixed assets, second to last tariff at lift, lift station. Mm -hmm. That 55,000, I think that's for the solar panels. I'm just curious if that's what that line That's is. my understanding as well. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. All right, if there's no further discussion, I'll place the motion before us to a vote. Those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Ayes have it, motion carries. Uh, moving on to 6G, hopefully I have my spot here. <clears throat> before us is resolution R-54-23 amending the 2023 general fund budget employee referral of police officers program direct referral i'll move approval as amended by finance and i'd like to clarify the the change in the be here it resolved um and that new language is be it further resolved by the Fitchburg common council that it amends the 2023 general fund budget to reflect the use of 47,500 in police vacancy savings from account 100-5210-110 to pay for the estimated bonuses of $40,000, account 100-5143-165 and related benefits $3,060, or sorry, $3,060 in FICA 100-5143-131 and $4,400 in WRS 100 dash 5143 dash 132. May I add a clarification? Uh, as uh, as amended by personnel committee. Oh, Not by, I say you said finance. Okay, yes, as, as amended by personnel committee that all of those things were covered in personnel. I'm going to motion for approval, but I just need a clarification on that. Did you was there any any specifications on or specific areas as far as the referral were another I, when I watched personnel it was there was a sergeant and lieutenant they were excluded yeah there's a couple of things that I can go through the list if you want is that um, part of the amendment or yes I I'll move it with every single one of those amendments I believe that there were four there were four like line items and then two of them had budget implications which is why we updated the language of the final clause all right without complicating this much further, but maybe I should leave it to council. Um, I'm in agreement with the amendment, but I would like to take it even further to include the sergeants and the lieutenants. The only person that I would not include as far as receiving the referral would be the, uh, the department head, because those particular individuals can recuse themselves from the interview process. So is that a formal motion to amend? Excuse me? Is that a formal motion to it amend? Is a formal a motion to amend. So, uh, if I may just yeah. give the exact language as it was amended in the policy itself. 
Uh, it said all city of Fitchburg employees accept elected officials, human resources, personnel, and managers with hiring authority over the referred candidates, which includes police chief, deputy police chief, and police lieutenants are eligible for the referral, bo referral bonus. So what you're then saying is that you would remove, your motion is to remove the deputy police chief and police lieutenants? I would want them to be able to receive the bonus, referral bonus as well. Because what you're just stating, it sounds like what you're reading, that they are part So there of is a comma in there that I should have paused more. Sure. Um, so all city of Fitchburg employees accept elected officials, human resources personnel, and managers with hiring authority over the referred candidates, which includes, I'm adding that word in parentheses, police chief, deputy police chief, and police lieutenants. So those are all excluded. Mm -hmm. And then all other city employees are eligible. So I've added some clarifying words there. All right. So you, what, your, what your motion is is to remove, and I don't want to put words nope. in your motion, is the deputy police chief and the police lieutenants? That's correct. I would like them to be able to receive the referral as well. So I, it, based on what you're saying, to remove, they would be removed from the list you just provided, elected officials, human resources, and the department head, meaning Chief Morales. Well, I'm curious if it would make sense to remove reference to all three of those because they are all managers with hiring authority over the referred candidates and they would have to recuse themselves. Clearly the police chief is not by your motion eligible so we could leave that in there. Right. But yes. To be clear. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean I feel if they have a referral mm -hmm. they they can certainly I don't think we should exclude them. I, I think I think they may have they have, may have as personnel stated brothers, sisters. Um, uh, and, and I'm not going down the road of nepotism. They don't have, organizations that I that I have worked for. We could hire family members. It's just that you could not report directly to a family member. Um, I think there's value in those individuals being able to refer. They would just simply. Re recuse themselves from the interview process, so. Can I, I, I so um, I'll just comment a little bit about the personnel. Yeah. The reason, um, I believe it was brought up by Alder Radafrata, she had some context based on her professional experience at her job mm -hmm. where they have a referral bonus program. She said that hiring managers, anyone that can hire or have authority over, I guess not authority, but anyone who can hire cannot be eligible for the bonus in her position. So we discussed it with the chief and with Sarah, uh, who were both in attendance, and just discussed the possibility of that exclusion. And it hadn't come up in their original discussions, but uh, in conversation with them, it was clear to me that both the committee and the chief and Sarah all thought it was a, it was a good change. So I, in terms of my vote, I based that Mm -hmm. a lot on, on, on making sure that the chief and, and the HR director were comfortable with that change. So that's why I'm, I was inclined to keep it. I, I didn't have a strong opinion until mm -hmm. we had that part of the conversation. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's, that's, that's what it, be. it Do you know if Chief Morales is going to be there? I don't know if he is going to be a counsel, but I could, uh, could you get a hold of him and see if he's available. I believe Sarah Olson is planning to attend counsel, so she would obviously have some background uh, but it could be important to hear from the police chief as far as who he typically includes in the hiring processes. And if, for example, the deputy police chief is always going to be involved in a hiring process, um, it, it may be difficult for them to recuse themselves. So I'll reach out to the police chief and see if he's available for counsel this evening. If possible, because I uh, did reach out to the chief. Okay. I had a conversation, a follow-up, because I took a different position. Okay. And... And he said, after some conversation, he felt, well, no, I have raised a very good point. The only person that he felt that uh, would not receive the referral would be he himself, the department head. And then, well, of course, you're listing a few additional other ones, which I, would, which I would agree with, elected officials or human resources. But so that's why I'm taking just a step further. Got it. So based on your informal, based yeah, on your conversation yeah. with Chief Morales. So maybe if he can join this evening 
and just to get his take on it. Okay. Formally. Texting as we speak to him. Right. Okay. All right. All right. So if that's the case, do we just want sure. to? So as of right now, the motion on the floor is to amend the policy to allow the deputy chief and the lieutenants to receive the referral bonus. So it's only the police chief that is excluded. So we could either vote on that or you could withdraw that if you want to save that conversation for council. But Brandy has to make the call since it's your motion. I would like to save it for council. Yeah. So you would withdraw? I will with withdraw. Okay. And then I can change my motion to refer to council without a recommendation from finance? Yes, right? Uh, She's writing. I interrupt her thought. Or should you, you just change? Yours is a kind of a big change. Yeah. <laughs> so maybe we... Oh, gosh, yeah. For Why don't you make a, so a motion to amend your motion? Do you ins would you be refer it to I council? I guess talking with Randy, would you be comfortable voting on it as is with amended by personnel and then bring up the adding it back at council and vote on that specifically? No, I, don't, I, wouldn't, be, I wouldn't be comfortable with that. Okay. Because then it's, no, no, I don't believe so. Yeah. Okay. So then maybe it's best just to. So the other option is we could have one approve it. You could choose not to approve it as it is currently and that would then go to council without a recommendation. Or we could... Um, you know, Gabriel, you want to withdraw your original? Uh, yeah, why, why wouldn't we have the op option to withdraw? We've done it before. Is it just because of the complexity? Because there's all the, there was a, the amendments. Yeah. So are you, is that what you want to do? You want to withdraw and just start over? We can make that happen. I, I personally do. Yeah, I'm okay with that. Let's, okay. let's withdraw. I'll, I'll withdraw my motion. Okay. So now we need a new motion. So I move to refer uh, resolution R5423 to council without a recommendation from finance. Motion, f and you, you're, I'm waiting for the, the nod. I'm writing. Yes. Yep, okay. all good. All right. So we still need to vote on that. All right. All right. Those in favor of, uh, those in favor of the, of, of the, 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 the um, the, the motion, motion before us. I have amendments going around in my mind. The motion before us signified by saying aye. 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 Yeah, yeah. The ayes have it. Motion carries. Yep. All right. Moving on to H, 6H. Um, we have a resolution. Resolution R. Res, we have a resolution before us. R, resolution R-60-23, authorizing legal services in the defense of FTC Retail East LLC uh, excessive tax assessment lawsuit. This is a direct referral. I'll move approval. Okay, Alder Gerhardt, motion for approval. Discussion? No, I'm sorry. Uh, Misty, are you going to speak to this item? Yes. Okay. Uh, so there is a closed session about this on the council meeting as well, if you would like to take that opportunity. Um, but this is a relatively common <laughs> resolution we've approved recently. Uh, we had another lawsuit served against us for an assessed value claim. Uh, staff is recommending that we use Attorney Seibel, uh, who has been successful with us for other similar cases recently and is a leader in this industry. Um, so we'd like to contract with her uh, to defend the city in this lawsuit. For this particular one, there are 12 tax parcels included in total, six of which are in TID 4, which is the one that we will hopefully be closing tonight, um, six of which are without. So the plan would be to split the cost 50-50 TID for and non-TID, um, but when we get to the council meeting, it will be important that we approve this before we close the TID. Okay. Um, discussion? All right. Hearing none, I'll place the motion before us to a vote. Those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Ayes have it. Motion carries. Moving on to our last resolution that's before us, which is 6I, Resolution R-64-23, authorizing legal services in the defense of Goldleaf Fitchburg Seminole Creek excessive tax assessment lawsuit. This is a direct referral. I move approval. And Misty, would you like to speak to this as well? Yes, please. Same idea. Uh, staff is recommending that we use the same attorney for this defense as well. It's just another claim for a different um, set of properties that are filing against their assessed value. And then this one is not in the TID, so it would be fully borne within the internal service fund. Okay, very good. Discussion. Hearing none, I'll place the motion before us to a vote. Those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Ayes have it. Motion carries. All right. 
Moving on to the next item on our agenda, and that's announcements. The next Finance Committee meeting is scheduled for March 28, 2023. 2023. Uh, any additional announcements? No. Oh, all right. Very good. Uh, then I will motion to adjourn. Oh, so moved. <laughs> <laughs> All right, those in favor signify for adjournment signify by saying aye. Aye. Ayes have it. Motion carries. We are adjourned at 6.35 p.m. <laughs>